This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, I think we could say Manoira Hamakim Hazah. This is the Makim that tradition has it. The cemetery, an older cemetery, was moved here in Hey Tav Shin Tesvav, 1956. And uh, the old cemetery, the bones were brought here, as it says on the sign, Lefi HaKabbalah Shabi Yadenu, Beneim Ho'at Samais, Don Yitzchak Abarbanel, Umahari Mintz, Rabbi Yehuda Mintz, Zuchusam Yagam Aleinu. It's hard to capture the lifetime of such a great personality in a few moments. The Abarbanel, of course, was the finance minister of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabel, and he was given the only allowance to remain in the country to be able to assist them. But as a Roya Neman, the Abarbanel went into Golos with his brethren in 1492, and he's wandering. He comes finally to Italy in the year Geirim, Geirim, 1493, the year Geirim, 1493. He comes to Naples in 1493. He then comes to Monopoli in the south of Italy. And finally, in, in uh, 1503, the Abarbanel comes to Venice. And in Venice, here in Italy, the Abarbanel completes many of his unpublished works. He wrote a trilogy on Mashiach, Yeshua is Mashichai, Mayone HaYeshua, Mashmiya HaYeshua. He writes many interesting things about what he saw here in Italy. He writes in his commentary to Perkei Avais that when he came to Italy for the first time in his life, he saw something called a rabbi. In, in Spain, there's no, there's no concept of rabbi. He says, where does rabbi come from? Where does smicha come from? There's a university in Padua. They had doctors, so they also ordained rabbis. The, the Abarbanel wrote a great work on the Haggadah, Zevach Pesach. There is a kitzer of the Zevach Pesach called Tzli Eish. Who wrote Tzli Eish? Rabbi Huda Arye of Modena. Now, uh, the Abarbanel saw in his wandering, in his exile, a great Hashgach Pratis when he came from Spain to Italy. He writes in a letter, Kol hayamim All the years I worked in high government. I didn't have time to learn. So even though I had power, I had prestige, I had wealth, I didn't have time to learn. Vlayadati Sefer, I couldn't open up a book. Ki chalisi bahevel yamai bebahala. I expended my days in emptiness. And it says that Barbanel, now I understand what it means. Now that I have no position and no money, now I have the opportunity to learn. That Barbanel was nifter in the year Reish Samach Ches. Reish Samaches, 1508, at 71 years old. But we don't refer to it as the year Reish Samaches. We refer to it as the year Chasar, the year that we're missing the Abarbanel. The Abarbanel was brought to burial, and five days earlier was the burial of Yehuda Mintz, and they were buried side by side in the old cemetery, and their bones were also brought here together to this cemetery. I think I've been waiting many, many years to share... This Dvar Torah with you, B'makoyim Zeh, I think uh, it's a Chayv Kadosh to share. Uh, the Abarbanel has uh, a very unique approach to understanding what we call Berchas Yaakov. Anyone who's listened to the Shirim over the years, we've said this many, many times. All the Rishonim struggle to understand what exactly is Berchas Yaakov. Is it blessing? Ruvain didn't get bracha. Shimon didn't get bracha. They were being criticized. They were being castigated. Zvulan seems to get real estate advice. Zvulan l'chef yamim yishkoin. Yehuda is being complimented. Yosef is being complimented. Usher is a baker. What exactly is Berchas Yaakov? Is it blessing? Is it advice? Is it prophecy? And only the Abarbanel comes up with an original explanation. Abarbanel says it was not real estate advice. It was not castigation. It was not rebuke. Yaakov Avinu is in his deathbed. He sees the family is growing. He understands that for there, there to be a future of Klal Yisrael, we need to have a king. We need to have a melech. And one by one, Yaakov Avinu goes through his children, studying their personality, their future, and determining who would be worthy to be the next king and who kings will come from. Ruvain, Yaakov says, is disqualified. Pachas Kamayim, he's too impetuous. He's too quick in his decision-making. Shimon and Levi, 
they're powerful, but they they have anger anger. Or Apam Kiyaz. Usher, Usher is not a melech. Usher doesn't have what it takes. Usher bakes. Vuhu yitain madani melech. Zvulan's a businessman. You can't a businessman cannot a king cannot be in commerce. Even Yosef, that Barbanel says, Yosef, because he elicited the jealousy of the brothers, did not have the personality to be the ultimate Melech Yisrael. Only Yehuda, Yehuda Ata Yoiducha Achecha, Yehuda had the power, the durability, the endurance, the courage to be the Melech. This is what Yaakov Avinu was doing in his deathbed, and this is an approach which is Roy Lamisha Amrai, because the Abarbanel says, Ad Hayoim Hazeh. All the leaders of Klal Yisrael always come from Shevet Yehuda, from David Amelech. And one thing we know about the Abarbanel, the Abarbanel writes in many of his Svarim that he is Choyter Migeza Yishai, that he himself was a shoot from the great trunk of Yishai. Abarbanel writes in Sefer Malachim, Mizera David, I am from the seed of David, Nagiru Metzave Luumi Mishoyresh Yishai. Says Abarbanel, all the Gedolei Yisrael from the time of Yehuda, Ad Hayoim Hazeh, always come from David HaMelech, from Shevet Yehuda. So this is uh, one of the great approaches of the Abarbanel, Zuchusam Yagein Oleinu. You've just experienced another Torah class, brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.